Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, he's a level 3 whiskey sommelier. He's a master moot. This is a Johnny Walker that I didn't even know existed. Wine cask blend. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Or Hefe. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's an amazing Johnny Walker? This is from Jeff Javalona. Javalona? I... Javalona? Havalona. Havalona? Hefe Havalona. <laughs> Jeff Javalona, you magnificent <laughs> bastard. Ah, uh, so this is a Johnny Walker $30 whiskey mm -hmm. from Blender's Batch called the Wine Cask Blend. Is this new? Yeah. Okay. I've never heard of it. And it began with an experiment set in motion by Jim Beverage. How cool would it be to be involved in the whiskey industry? He had no and chance. And your last name is Beverage. He had no chance. He had no shot. So um, they started maturing whiskey in casks that used to hold wine. Mm -hmm. And then they used those wine casks to blend with grain and malts mm -hmm. to create not a pure wine cask finish, but a blended whiskey with a uh, that some of it with wine cask finished. All right, I'm gonna wait a couple minutes before I get into this, because I'm still off the heels of a fairly uh, whiskey. And the grain in this mix is sort of jumping out of the glass really aggressively. Yeah, I'm, I gotta have to get further away. We might need to let this breathe a little. Gotta get, what are you doing? You just, you're insane. You're insane. No, I am getting a, it's very fruity in the nose though. Fruity. You know it's fruity? It's fruity like, um, it's fruity in that metallic way, like, Fruit roll-ups that you used to peel off the plastic wrap, roll into a tube, and then chew. Oh, see, I just got too confident in that backboard. Mm -hmm. I think the backboard will take care of me. And the backboard overshot you. It did. It I did that left-handed. Whoa, 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 whoa. There I, we go. Something else showed up. I can't tell if the slight rubber note I'm getting is from the grain alcohol in here or from the aftertaste of the last whiskey. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just a couple minutes. <sighs> Y'all just sit there. Chill out. Chill out. Calm down. Oh, there's just nothing on the taste, though. Damn it, I wanted a little more bite. It's got to be at 40. Yeah, it's 40. Oh, uh, no, no, I'm getting... That goes down so, so smooth. The maximum, uh, the biggest flavor I'm getting out of this... No real finish. It's just a butter note. Shows yeah. up halfway through and stays with you. You know what? Uh, it's like, uh, you ever butter a Pop-Tart? That's why you're so fat. No, I... <laughs> that's why I'm so fat. <laughs> We went straight to that. <laughs> All right, so here's the actual magical thing you should try. Get the non-frosted Pop-Tart, the plain one. <laughs> What's the point? Strawberry Pop-Tart. Right. Toast it, butter it. It will change your life forever. I was- And that's what this reminds me of. I was a toaster strudel kid. Really, the strudels? Yeah. Why? Because I never put the icing on there. Yeah, but you, why were they better than Pop-Tarts? Are you kidding me? Nah. There's definitely more fruit flavor in there. Just the- But I like more of the bready. Taste. Ah, it's not. It's not. It's, oh, oh, it's just like one of my favorite parts of the top pop tart was that angled crust on the back that had no fruit with no it flavor over. either. There's no flavor. No, There's no butter there. on it. It's buttered this toasted bread. The crispy, flaky crust of a toaster strudel and the quality of the filling far superior to any pop tart. No, it was better filling. If we're going generic, crust. off the shelf pastry crap, pop tart wins. In the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting the, a new war! This is the new biscuit. Pop tart course. versus strudels. <laughs> the, now, we, hey, it is not fair to include actual, authentic, homemade strudels. No, no, toaster strudels. No, it needs to the come frozen, from a box. The frozen toaster strudel. And then you have to open a foil cellophane <laughs> to put it in the. <laughs> get, it's okay. got, this, I mean, there's no comparison. I, I think <laughs> you convinced yourself whenever you were a wee lad, right? And we were poor. Are you mocking? <laughs> <laughs> Our poor yeah, upbringing. Yeah, my family was so rich. Yeah, filthy rich <laughs> growing up. I'm pretty sure there were a couple of times where you almost ate two meals in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, me and Budget Gourmet like yeah. that. <laughs> All right, this has been enough time. This, this is a pretty easy drinkable whiskey. It's a background whiskey. I think it's better than the generic Johnny Walker Red or the... But it's not as good as the black or the double black or the... What do you want to compare it to? I'm going to try it to the black. Okay. Well, is that fair? Because the black has no wine finish in it. Well, compare... So what's the goal? Is the goal to compare it to something like it? Or is the goal to say for the same money, yeah. what's well known that's just a better quality, Both. a better, more complicated flavor? Both. Okay, so for in the Johnny Walker line, yeah. let's go back to... Who's our buddy who gave us the finally gave us the black label? 
Did you put, you put um, people's names on this? This is more expensive you than know the $30, what? though. If you cared about the people, you would put the name of the Magnificent Bastard on, on the, bottle. the bottle. I really should. Yeah, we'll, we'll start doing that. That's a lot of effort, though. Well, maybe we won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's the black. It's not effort. It's like a sticker pad and then a pin. I would do it if you sent them to me. The Ad back, the black. My address on the bottom of the screen. It's still as smooth, but ends with peat, and this is smooth, but ends with fruity this notes. Is black. Yeah, it's got the same. It's seventy percent the same, and the finish changes. So this one ch finishes in fruit, and that one finishes in slight peat. On the nose, this is more uh, apples and honey, and mm -hmm. I almost said strawberries, but it's not strawberries. It's some kind of. I'm gonna pour one you've never tried before, as our comparison whiskey. Mm hmm. What? Black Bull. Black Bull. From Duncan Taylor. I haven't had this. This is a brand line from Duncan Taylor. They have an age statement Black Bull. I think it's 12, but this is just the budget Kylo Black you, Bull. You, I gotta tell you, I like this better than the black. You do. I absolutely do. This, I'm getting a nice, sweetened, buttery Irish note. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I couldn't put my finger on it. It's Irish. It mm. tastes like a pot stilled Irish whiskey. Yeah. And the black just tastes like a blended scotch. Tastes like a blended scotch. And the double black has more character. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, try the black bowl, which is one of my favorite budget whiskeys. Oh man, come on. No no no. The more I am comparing this to other other things, that buttery Irish note. I really like that black bowl. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. Black bowl is better than the black, the Johnny Walker Black. But wine cask still beats. I it. still like this better. Fair enough. Rex is going to bat for the wine cask blend. Well, with what we're comparing, mm -hmm. right? I could, yeah, yeah I could in think a thirty dollars range. I could think of a few things we could pull off the yes, shelf. That, yes, yes, yes. But of these, man. So give it a shot, man. Yeah, it's not uh, not bad for the price point. Uh, Fish Big sixty five. I had the opportunity to give Lagavulin, uh, Lagavulin 12 year a try last night yeah. at my local, at my favorite restaurant. It was hidden on the top shelf, and I was shocked. I had one before uh, dinner, another during, and one <laughs> for dessert. Yeah. The, ste the steak was okay too. <laughs> Almost on the lines of the Freud, but sticks with you longer. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Steak $33, scotch $45. My smile while the, while the missus drove home. <laughs> Priceless. Wait, you got three of those for forty-five dollars? Because if you did, that is a steal so in Austin. Longer than twelve year. And Austin, that would have cost you sixty to seventy dollars for those three drinks. Really? Oh yeah, dude. The twelve year. No question, that would have been a twenty dollars pour. How much is the sixteen then? Oh, sixteen is almost always between uh, eighteen to twenty-five, sometimes thirty dollars for a pour. For a pour in Austin. You can never get it for less than 15. Hmm. At, well, at least in the bars that I have frequented so, that had it. to give the notes on the Black Bull, which I don't think we did. No, we didn't, but we'll, we'll do its own review at some point. All right, so Cameo. Just it's cameo. got a little more er, funk. A little more earth. And a little more earth. Yeah. Man, man, I just got, it's totally, totally background list. All right. This thing, wine cask blend. So this, these guys are doing good. I'm going to go back to it again. Mm, Ryan Taylor, how mm. far north are you guys thinking your distribution will be able to get right out of the gate? Right out of the gate. Yeah, <laughs> out of the gate, zero. But, so here's the thing that's kind of been amazing to me. The amount that has happened within the last month. Of from, involvement? From the tribe, okay. and the involvement, and then like the people within the industry. Because one of the things that blew me away was the caliber, I'm being careful not to drop specific names. Yeah, 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 keep that silent. <laughs> yeah, but the caliber of the industry insiders, the heavy hitters. The, uh, who heard what we were doing. Who have approached us. And thought it was an amazing idea that they wanted to be involved in. Yeah, not to do on their own. They, like With no. our community. They yeah, want to, do want to the, join us. And it's after having... And by us, I don't mean Rex and I. <laughs> I mean the tribe. The us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what struck me, and I, I, I mentioned this to Daniel, it's like, man, in my, from what I've seen so far in the whiskey industry, the true heavy hitters, the people who, with the sentence, can really make broad sweeping changes, like mm -hmm. gigantic things happen. Those people are always really like humble and cool and mellow. Absolutely. No ego. And looking all, to lift others. 
The thing that has been really surprising and amazing to realize is the true heavy hitters in the industry. They absolutely have the back of the tribe and the Magnificent Bastards and what we're all about in terms of building a more magnificent whiskey culture and no snobbery, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, they don't like the snobbery either. They see it as holding the industry back. Yep. And that's encouraging. Yeah. That means we picked the right industry. So, uh, I understand the impetus though. So mm -hmm. here's the thing. In music, this is very common. You find a band when they're fledgling and floundering and trying to find their voice and their people mm -hmm. and you fall in love and you just follow them, you buy merch, you go to shows, right? Right. And then one day, three albums in, they get a show on a WB Network TV series right. and they explode and all of a sudden there's hundreds of thousands of people are like, this band's amazing. There's a part of you that your reaction is, screw you, where were you when these guys needed you? I've been here from the beginning. You don't understand. Right. You don't know the journey. You don't understand the story. You're not a real fan. So you're talking about the gatekeepers. Yes, what I'm saying is, most of the gatekeepers have been in whiskey obsessively and putting their life blood into it when right. it was not cool. And no one thought it was that cool. And now whiskey's becoming trendy and cool and popular. Yeah. And a lot of those people feel like they're being surrounded by fair weather fans. I get that. It's like the team fan for a football team. It's like, you know, now that you're in one of the Super Bowl, now you're wearing the jersey. Where were you <laughs> when we lost 11 games in a row? Right. Right. And so I get that feeling yeah. of like, you don't understand, you're not a true fan, I bled for this. Where were you when we needed you? Yeah, exactly. But but guys, we gotta get over that. <laughs> we gotta get over that. Yeah. Because anything that's gonna grow with strength is going to involve an influx of people who don't understand. The right thing to do is to turn to them and say, we're glad you're here, Right. we'll, We'll show them, you the context. Meet them at their level. Mm -hmm. Because they can't absolutely get to the level of somebody that's been around for years, but it can't be, it's not a, a switch that you flip. Yep. It's a progression that, you know, you have to help them along that path. Yeah, and, and that's why when someone says, I just tried Johnny Walker Red, you don't mm -hmm. on them for trying Johnny Walker Red. <laughs> and when someone else says, I just drank Johnny Walker Red and I can't get his taste out of my mouth, you can still laugh. <laughs> and you'd be like, yeah. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And the, tri uh, uh, the, the, the way we define it in the tribe is you're free to have opinions, even strong opinions. Mm -hmm. But the moment that turns to shitting on somebody else because they have an opinion you don't agree with, yeah. now you're a snob and you're done. And it's a fine line. <laughs> All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for free. If you steal, may a steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, Drop a question or comment down below.